25 years after the words, women's rights are human rights, echoed from Beijing throughout the world, it's an honor to support this monumental effort to accelerate progress for women and girls and lay out a path to achieving gender equality within our lifetimes. Yet as we celebrate this milestone, the coronavirus pandemic has also laid bare and worsened the many inequalities still facing half of humanity. Women have lost jobs in this crisis almost twice as much as men, making up to 54% of overall job losses, despite accounting for 39% of global employment. With schools closed and many people working from home, pandemic lockdowns have significantly increased the burden of unpaid care, which disproportionately falls on mothers and daughters. And domestic violence and teenage pregnancies have spiked by double digits as girls and women have had to shelter in place, often with abusers. At the same time, we know when women are empowered and lead, societies succeed. This year, countries with women heads of state had six times fewer confirmed deaths from the pandemic than countries led by men. And women have been at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19 as doctors and healthcare professionals, community volunteers, and first responders. As we reflect on the progress of the past 25 years, we also look ahead to the next 25. And thanks to the guidance of both experienced and emerging women leaders from around the world, we know how to move forward. We have to change social norms so that both women and men know why it's important for women and girls to be leaders in the fights for healthcare, clean water, nourishing food, and an environment safe from climate change. We have to harness the power of data, technology, and innovation to help give women equal voice, equal pay, and economic resources, and to identify new gaps we need to fulfill and new opportunities we need to seize. There's no question, achieving gender equality is at the cornerstone of building a more just and equitable society. In my role at the Rockefeller Foundation, I've seen how supporting women and girls can lift everyone up. From the woman I met building F-150 pickup trucks in a Detroit auto plant, to Ruby Kumari, a woman who started her own sewing school in rural India with access to electricity and power, to Dr. Agnes Kalabata, an outstanding global leader who's reshaping African agriculture as the president of the Alliance for a Green Revolution for Africa. When we support women and girls, we make the future brighter for all of our children. And that's why the Rockefeller Foundation will continue fighting for gender equality, however long it takes. 25 years ago, I was in Beijing for the UN Fourth World Conference on Women. It was a watershed moment in the history of progress for women and girls. Their First Lady, Hillary Clinton, with whom I traveled to the conference, captured the moment in her historic speech with words that still echo around the world. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. The conference represented a giant step forward for women and girls. It also adopted a platform for action to realize the goals that were laid out. It is a blueprint against which we still today measure our progress for women and girls. The conference also catalyzed a movement for women's rights around the world. It had a profound impact on me and millions more, and it too reverberates to this day. Over the last 25 years, women and girls have made great strides. That is indeed the case. But significant gaps remain and our work must continue to close those gaps. We also confront new challenges that weren't on the agenda 25 years ago. They weren't apparent 25 years ago. From technology to climate change, and COVID has exposed systemic inequalities that threaten, hard to, threaten to roll back hard-won gains 
The Georgetown Institute for Women, Peace, and Security, with support from the Rockefeller Foundation, is proud to share our new report, Beijing Plus 25, Accelerating Progress for Women and Girls. The report assesses the progress that's been made and provides a roadmap to closing the gaps. It also seeks to harness the COVID challenge to build back better. The report was informed by the insights and experiences of a group of distinguished women leaders from all over the globe. In my conversations with each of them, I was inspired by their lifelong commitment to gender equality and the, their leadership in government, in multilateral organizations, in civil society and the private sector. I know you too will be inspired by their words and their insights, and we thank them for their participation. Here we highlight the closing chapter of the report, The Way Forward. It includes seven pillars for building a better future. After all, our journey for equality continues.